please welcome back to the stage Jabari Young and singer, actress, author, and entrepreneur Fantasia. Oh, he left. Jabari, you left me. Oh, please, Jabari. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello. Where would you like me to sit, Jay? Right here. You okay. can sing where you want. You see, you I had to bring out the young lady. Is she in here? Is she Zoe, y'all, she just left. No, there she is. Oh, there she goes right there. So listen, come here. All right. So she came back. First of all, when I walked into the first dressing room, it wasn't my dressing room, but there was a baby doll. And her hair was beautiful. I was like, who baby doll is that? And I was like, I'm taking the baby doll. I didn't want you to know. I wasn't going to steal it. <laughs> but I thought about it. <laughs> my daughter, I have two girls, and the little kid in me still comes out at times. So when I saw your baby, the fact that you've given me one, I wanted to walk out with your product because I wanted you to see that I'm going to promote you as a young black queen. I want to promote you and sit it right here beside me because that's what we have to do as business women: protect, love, and promote each other. So I got you. <laughs> Thank you. We're gonna put her. We're gonna put yeah. her right here, Jay. <laughs> there we go. Do that. That's my baby doll, cause I you don't know it, but I'm taking it. <laughs> well, look, we got some other breaking news, right? Cause y'all gonna have another round of applause. I don't know if you guys have heard on social media or anything like that, but I was just notified that um, Fantasia will have her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> Keep and it I, coming. Give this sister some love. And I was trying so bad in the back not to cry. I'm surprised y'all ain't hear me in the back. I was screaming and hollering because my grandmother, back in the day, I used to hate my name, Jabari. My grandmother used to order Crystal. Hmm. And she named all of us, and she came across the name Fantasia. Hmm. But when I was young, you know when you walked into the gas stations and they had the name tags? Mm -hmm. They never had Jabari. They never, they never had Jabari either. <laughs> no. Never had Fantasia. And I was young, and I'm thinking, man, I'm going to change my name when I get older. And my grandmother used to tell me, no, baby girl, God told me to name you that because you're going to be a star. And there and it goes. And so in the back, I just kept thinking. Yeah. You have these angels that come into your life like this, right? When we was on the phone, you know, you have the nail lady telling you guys listening to you. You know, you have... Your grandma, I'm saying, and now here you are, a star in yourself. Yeah. Let it out. Yeah, but it wasn't easy getting here, so let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're holding it in. I know you are. You don't want to mess up your makeup, but I know you're holding it in. But if you have to, let it out, because this is a moment where we want to celebrate you and give you your flowers now. Everything that you've been through. No. Absolutely. But listen... Let's just jump right into it so you won't start crying, right? Um, we were on the phone last week, and uh, I asked you, I said, you know, listen, if you had to name or give one of your songs that defines your life right now, right, what was it? And you said, I'm going to think about it. Did you, you, what song is it? And I still didn't find one because I think there's a new song being made. Ooh, I like it. That was my past, but was so necessary mm -hmm. to get me to here right now. Yeah. So there's a new song, there's a new sound mm. that I have to put into this season. Mm. And so it hasn't been made yet. But trust me, I just told my team in the back, oh, there go my husband, he's so fine. Man, I, you better take a bow, brother. Look. I, <laughs> there you go. I was just telling them, I was like, you know, I need to go back and get after the, that announcement. You know, because I'm, I'm on Purpose Street and not... So there's two different streets. You can choose successful, or you can choose purpose. Because I'm on Purpose Street, I took the announcement today and I said, now it's time for me to get into the studio. I could sit back and my, my friend was messing with me. She was like, ooh, let me give you a glass. You a star, you a star. I was like, girl, uh-uh, I'm a king's king. I thank him for what he's adding, for what he's adding to my list for the things that he's doing, but I still gotta stay in a certain posture for purpose. 
or else I'm going to get in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Man, don't let me start, please. No, start. Start. You know, well, listen, you, you're going to be making some new music, right? And it's still independent, right? And yes. I want to kind of start there because, you know, I want to dive into Fantasia, the businesswoman, right? Yeah. The, what is that process like in being independent? I know I was hearing you on recent interviews and you said, hey, I get the freedom to choose how I want to roll it out now. And there's a, there's a power in that. What's it been yeah. like for you? It's been great. You know, I've taken control. I had one idol when I was 19. 20 years ago, this year. Well, right? I think it's 21. 21? Eh? I'm about to be 40. Mm. But I mean, I look. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on 40. I'm ready for 40 because I know what I want and what I don't want. Yes. I know how to say no in a nice way. But it's been great. Yeah. It's been great because now I can look back and say all of the work that I put into this. And of course, everything that I went through was necessary. And we're gonna speak about failure in a minute. Cause I used to run from failure. Now I think it's kind of like my cool friend. Mm. Mm. Why is that? You wanna talk? Yeah, let's talk. Without failure, I wouldn't be here. That's right. Without failure, I wouldn't have learned all the things that I've learned. I'm in school right now at Central State. That's right, studying business but, degree. Yeah. The business has taught me all I need to know mm -hmm. if I don't go no further. So without failure, I wouldn't be here today. We run from failure, especially as strong black people. We don't want failure up under our names. We don't want nobody to say, oh, she failed that. Oh, he failed that. But actually, if we look at it different, if without failure, none of us would be sitting in this room. So I make it my little friend. I don't want it to sit right here. Stay over there in the corner. <laughs> but it gives me time to look over there and figure out, okay, I don't need to make that move or that move. I probably need to go this way. Right. Because failure is telling me, we've been here before. We've been down this road. Now what you gonna do with it? Yeah. So I made it my little friend. Yeah. I don't run from it. I don't hide from it. Everything that I went through was necessary and was setting me up for where I am now. So to be independent, whew, feels so good. Because yeah. now I know that when I leave home from my children, I'm going to work, but I've set it up to where I get to see, the resi I get to see my stuff come home. I don't have to keep giving it out to everybody. My grandmother used to say, you have a gift, but don't let nobody prostitute it. You told me that on the phone. I was ready to record that one. Yeah. Let no one, and I, at the time, I was like, I don't even understand what she's saying, but what she's saying is, why must you get up out of your bed, get on a plane, leave your children, go out, do these tours, you, you, you're away, you're away, you're on stages, you're on stage, you get home and you ain't got nothing. What you doing? You're wasting time. So that's when I decided I'm gonna go independent. I went independent first, before I started Rock Soul Productions. And I said, you know what? I love labels, not here to trash them, not here to bash them. But they're taking away everything that I should be bringing home. Yeah. So I created my own. Yeah, well let's dive into that, right? Rock Soul Productions, I know we talked about it. Um, based in North Carolina, yeah. right, where you grew up at. Yes. Um, what's in store for the production company? And I know you've already made changes. Like, what, what did you find out about being the CEO of a production company now? And I know you're probably like, damn, I thought I learned. But what did you learn and what are you learning in this process? It's only been a few months. Yeah, I'm forever learning. You guys have to forever be students. You have to forever be a student. You will never know it all. And I don't want to know it all. I will learn from some people in this room. You will learn some things from me. That's called connections, right? So starting the business, I didn't know it was gonna be as hard as it is, but it's been a journey. Mm. I never ever sent out an email. I was the artist. I had people to do that for me. Let them do all the work. You count the money, you do the email, and you do, you do it. Then I realized well, you got them doing it and you don't know what's going on. So you don't know what's coming in and coming out. You're just only trusting what everybody is saying. You have to stand up, Fantasia, and now it's time for you to become a businesswoman. 
So now I'm emailing, and I didn't realize the emails, you gotta talk a certain way. <laughs> <laughs> you got to approach it a certain, you know. Do I answer now, I answer later, let it breathe. <laughs> I learned that though from, from my team and from my husband, who's my partner. Mm. And, and I'm getting up in the mornings, I have a schedule and it ain't easy, but I'm emailing. I'm checking my bank account. I see, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Girl, I see $100 and I be like, can I ask you a question? Who sent out 100? <laughs> Where did it go? But I have to do that because for a while I just let everybody else run havoc. And people say, I got your back. Come on, y'all, we're living in a world now where can I, I just gotta find the right words. I got your back, I love you, you so good. And, and nor do I lead with my hurt. You can't run a business with your hurt. You can't run a business with emotions. So I ran into somebody that was working for us for a small period of time. And I started realizing that they were just running havoc, leading with hurt, leading with what they have been through and bringing it onto Rock Soul Productions. And I said, okay, I'm, when, when you run a business, you, it's like a game of chess. You gotta make the right moves. I had to sit back. I couldn't just let them go, but I had to give them a, you know, chances and speak to them about some of the things that I was seeing. And so about on that third, fourth, I think it might have even been a fifth. I said, okay, I have to remove it because it's gonna mess up, this, this ship is sailing. And one rotten apple or one person could sink this ship. And God gave it to me, so I'm gonna have to remove it because it doesn't match with the rest of my team. When you're hiring people and you're starting businesses, make sure they match who you are. Because sometimes when you can't show up, they may have to show up on your behalf and they need to represent and reflect who you are. You get what I'm saying? So it wasn't quite. Mm. Yeah, it didn't I kept, go together. Yep, I kept trying. And it just wouldn't fit in any spot, any, any yeah. area. And I had to let them go. But what I did tell them on my way out is I'm praying for you and I hope that you can let go of all the things that you've been through in the industry so that you can move forward with what I see God has given you, which is a vision. But until you forgive, let go and move on, not use your emotions to, to get back at everybody through your business, then you'll be good. Yeah. Well, let's, let's dive back and see your past. Because I remember, you, you know, we See that hit? That, that, that just caught it. <laughs> you, I'm going to run that back. You can't start up a business to get back at anybody. No. You get what I'm saying? God gives you something, you're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to prove such, such wrong, I'm going to prove. It ain't about them. That's success. We talk about purpose. Now it hit. You can tell you were sorry. You pick it up. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, so, so, so that's why I said, you know, you got to take out all of that when you start. If God gives you something or you have a vision, you got to remove all of that so you can see clearly because now you're bringing on lives, people that you got to pay, you got to take care of. It's got to all work out and you can't manage it with your emotions. Yeah. So, You uh, said before in interviews that, you know, you have um, developed a voice for healing, right? Like, and, and my colleague, Erica Speed, when we got off that call, she was ecstatic, you know, and couldn't wait to see you in here. But I, I even heard it when we was talking, that voice for healing. Yeah. How did you develop that? The voice yeah. for healing. The, the, the voice of for healing. When you sing, you seem to be able to heal people, right? How did you develop it? Wow. That's crazy that you asked me that because I think it came from a lot of my own pain. Hmm. I, I was a, God uses me to get through other people, but if I don't feel what they feel, then how can I open my mouth and it come out? Right. Which sometimes is like, man, that's not fair. Lord, that ain't fair. <laughs> now you got to fix this. <laughs> but my grandmother used to tell me too much is given, much is required. Yeah. Anything worth having is worth fighting for. So he gave me this gift. And when I was, I think five or six years old, we were singing churches and this older mother came up to me and she said, 
you got something. God has given you a healing voice. When you open up your mouth, people are healed. And at the time, I was six. So I was like, yes, ma'am. Okay, good, great. <laughs> but now I realize it. So I have to go through what I go through. And all of the greats who came before me, when you watch their documentaries, they have stories. They are vessels being used to be able to go out amongst other people and bless them. It's bittersweet. Ooh. 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 <laughs> you caught it. Hey. You caught it? It's bittersweet. Yeah. But that's that thing when you're saying, okay, God, I, sur I surrender all. I surrender all. I ain't even <laughs> All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Not a little bit, not a part of it, not a all. you healing me. <laughs> um, Talk about that transition, right? You, you're going through music, right? And you're learning, and you're learning in the industry. You hear from artists all the time how it's just a mess. But then you transition into acting. And you told me on the call how Seely, playing the character Seely, how that helped. Yes, yeah. That helped um, you, right? It, re it repaired you in a way, right? Yeah. Explain what you mean. So I didn't want to play Seely. I had already played her years ago on Broadway, and I knew what that was about. And I was like, I can't take on that. It's a, it was a lot. Especially when I played it on Broadway, I was still a broken girl playing a broken woman's part. So that wasn't easy. I wanted far, far away from that. And I did it for a year on Broadway. And so when they came back and asked me, <laughs> PTSD, I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> and I told him, I said, y'all got to give me a second. Let me pray about it. Because in anything that you do, make sure your heart is in it. Make sure it's something you actually feel like you can put your time in and give your all to. Because if not, it's just going to fail. And so I was like, y'all give me a second. Let me pray. I prayed. And I prayed. I talked to my family, and I just knew that, okay, you have to do this for, in this season for all the young girls, like Zoe, for all of these young, black, beautiful girls. You got to do it because your story, not only are you playing a part, but after you play the part and you sit down and speak about it, your story is going to match up to why you played the part, and now they're going to take you really serious. Yeah. And so I did it, six months, right here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. six months. And I thought it was going to be very, very hard. Everything I thought, sis, didn't even happen. It was totally different from Broadway. Celie taught me so much this time because I was in a different place. When I played it back then, the broken young lady was just playing a broken part, so I took nothing from it but trauma. Yeah. What did she teach you this time? This time. Celie was a businesswoman. Any, who watched the movie? The old and the, okay, okay, great. Everybody, I was just everybody, saying. I love y'all. If you ain't seen it, yeah. please go. Color watch purple it. is what she's talking about for people who don't know, uh, right? Just in case purple. you don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jamal. <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> but in the movie, outside of all the ugly and all the things that she ended up a what? A successful businesswoman. She had her own store. She made her own clothes. And she sold them. She said, mm-hmm, you right there, I got you. Yep, mm-hmm. What is that, a fan? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You better market that. You better leave here and make some, baby. It works. <laughs> but she, she was a successful businesswoman. So while I was on set, even when, listen, you guys, we were starting like 4 o'clock in the morning and sometimes wouldn't get off to 4 o'clock in the morning. I had just had my baby. I'm going to tell y'all something else. I knew I was going through postpartum. I, knew, I had just had my daughter. I had to leave my other cheering. Now they followed me. My husband came too, but he had to go work. So I had to be a big girl. 
I stand on my own two feet, but without Celie, I couldn't have done it. I would, after certain scenes would be, they would call cut, I would go over to the corner and be like, dang, Celie, you was the one. They was doing all that talking, girl, but you was the one. And I said, when I leave here, I'm going to take something from Sealy, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start my, own, my other company, Rock Soul Productions. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And, and within that yes, process. Yes, fan. Bloop. Bloop. <laughs> <laughs> um, within that process, a uh, couple more things to let you wrap up. It, within that process, overcoming bankruptcy is yeah. one of the things that you were talking about and you were in that. How did you learn and what did you learn about that and now you're using to manage money? So... You know, a lot of times, everywhere I go, I always tell people that I lost everything twice. And I think that everybody places that with bankruptcy. But for me, it was like I had a bunch of people on my team um, who said they were handling all the business. Uh, I look up and I owe a million dollars in taxes. And so because of that, my lawyer didn't show up to court. And then they put my house up for auction. So I'm living in my house, and I got my mom. At the time, Zion was a little girl. She's 22 now, but she was little. Um, my little brother, everybody in one house. We stayed in a nice big old mansion in Charlotte, North Carolina. I think it was LL's old house. So I really thought I was doing something, okay? And I get a knock at the door. Um, and that was the first time I had ever been served. I ain't, I'm looking at him like, you want to come in and get something to eat? Can I ask you some questions? You know, he just pull out an word, bro, it's the truth. I'm thinking, what is the envelope? Can we talk about it? Because I ain't never been served. I mean, can I feed you out of you giving me this envelope? <laughs> but that was the first time I had missed. I was like, he's like, you been served? He was saying all these big words. I was like, okay. He leave, I close the door, Jabari. I'm like, ma, I been served. She come around the corner like, what? You know, you know a black mama. <laughs> she a preacher, but baby, don't push her. She's like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm still, like, I'm lost. And they said my house was going to be put up for auction. There was only one other option. I had to go out, and I had to pay that a million dollars. Yeah. I took, whew, I don't know where Dorikas is, if, if he's even in the room. I took so many shows, y'all, to pay it off. I had already had too much going on with my name. I didn't, I'm thinking, I don't need that. I paid off that a million dollars. No, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to come back with that. In the midst of paying off that a million dollars, I messed up both my knees. Let's talk about it. I had to have two knee surgeries. Tore my knees up, trying to fix it. So then I, 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 I was curious. I was like, okay, I keep hearing, because I say I lost everything. I lost it all, and then I just went back and worked. I didn't file bankruptcy. I didn't even know nothing about that. Nobody sat me down and was like, look, you, this is what you can do. This, it was just like either go to work or go to jail. That's all I kept thinking, and I wasn't ready for jail. Because I needed my nails down, my feet down, my hair <laughs> down, my clothes down. Just, just kidding. <laughs> I worked it off. But then I started doing my research and talking to some of these powerful uh, people that got us placed in my life, like Dr. Lynn Richardson, Tyler Perry. Um, and I always say my husband is a jewel. Bankruptcy ain't, listen. I ain't telling you to go file it, but I am telling you don't lose everything you got trying to keep up with the Joneses. I don't want to say this and it come across bad, so let me scan the room right quick. Hold up. <laughs> white, rich, white people file it all the time <laughs> to keep some of their money. So all I'm saying is this. We're, we are proud because we've been through a lot. We have as black entrepreneurs, we have as black people, black women, black men. So we don't really want that a part of our record. And I'm not saying go foul it, but I am so going to say keep some of your money. 
do it the, the right way. I got somebody on my team right now that's teaching me how to build wealth. I didn't know nothing about a trust. <laughs> I didn't know you could hire your own cheering. I knew nothing about nothing, but now, honey, I get a kick out of it. Did you get what I said, young man? <laughs> now, I get a kick out of it. You want to talk to me, girl, teach me something. Yeah. So that I can continue to build. That's right. And open doors for other young black people so that they can leave this world and die with a legacy and not be broke or broken. That's right. Give yeah. it up to Fantasia. Before you leave, yeah. before you leave the stage, um, one of our sponsors, eBay has a spotlight um, vendor on the mezzanine, and uh, Jaron Moore. Is he up there, Jaron? Stand up. What up, Jay? Yeah. He's the owner of Big Dreams, right? And as a part of the collection he curated, he made you a shirt. Yes. Yeah. And here it is. There she go. There she go. Yeah. The young lady that they said would never be nothing. Yeah. The young lady that they said when I fell, I would never get back up. That's right. But here I am. And before I leave you, I want to say I will forever and ever continue to reintroduce myself. I am Fantasia, the young lady that did not graduate from high school, who had a child at the age of 17. I failed, but I pray, as my husband would say, that I, when I leave, before I leave this earth, I will continue to fail and fail again, but share it with you so we can continue to grow. Amen. Fantasia, give it up. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. team would kill me. I got another business. <laughs> Candles, Addie's Place, robes, gowns. I want to bring back that classy thing to. So yeah, go find me. Love y'all. God bless y'all. And get you some candles. Okay. <laughs>